thanks very much. Um, hey, Thinking Digital, it's a, it's a pleasure to be back. I've been really busy over the, the last year. Uh, in fact, my life has changed completely in the last year because I became a dad. So, oh, thank you very much. I mean, it was, it, it was easy. Um, but for me, uh, my involvement was minimal. Um, and, um, but it's, it's, I, I, it's, childbirth is a wonderful opportunity for data collection. And uh, I've, uh, <laughs> so for the past year, I've been uh, monitoring like uh, health metrics and stuff. So I've got like, you know, it's my heart rate and, and it's a pedometer and, you know, sleep duration and stuff like that. Um, actually, I'm monitoring it there as well, um, just because I wasn't sure whether I could trust this one. Uh, so I got this one. Um, I mean, they both would be the same answer, but I guess they might both be wrong. I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's good to have a bit of redundancy. Um, what I've noticed is that uh, the mean average sleep duration has really plummeted uh, since the birth of my daughter. Um, and, uh, and, and actually, I, I was sleeping away from home today. So I lived down in London, but I was staying with my parents in Gateshead last night. And I had a wonderful sleep uh, last night. And I woke up this morning like at least two standard deviations from the mean. It was great. Um, but actually, uh, childbirth itself, labor itself, is a wonderful opportunity for data collection because um, there, are, there are certain bits of data that you have to keep track of during labor. And whenever you speak to a, a health professional, they always ask the same questions. Uh, how long are your contractions and how far apart are your contractions? And this is data, and you have to keep track of it. And in the old days, I guess you would kind of just keep an eye on the clock and, and keep it in your head. Um, you, maybe if you were very particular, you would write down the time and, and work, out, work it all out like that. But nowadays, the modern pregnant nerd can use an app. And uh, so I downloaded an app for my Android phone, uh, but there's apps available for the iPhone as well. Um, if you've got a Windows phone, you can use it to scrape the numbers into a rock. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what you people do, but uh, anyway. Um, that's an option. Uh, and the way, the way it works is uh, it's great. There's, just, there's a big button, and when the contraction starts, you press the button. And when the contraction stops, you press the button again. And uh, it takes care of all the data for you, and it spits out the average contraction length and the average duration between contractions averaged over the last half hour or hour or whatever uh, duration you want to average over. It's, it's fantastic. And that's a, a lovely job for Dad because uh, mum is quite busy. And uh, she doesn't have time for your stupid fucking app. Uh, so <laughs> that's... <laughs> that was me. <laughs> is, uh, are you having a contraction, darling? OK. Um, has it stopped now? OK. Um, I love you. <laughs> uh, so that's a nice, nice job. And what's great is you can Google um, uh, you know, how long should my contractions be before I go into hospital? And it, it says this many minutes and seconds, and it got to that point. So we called the hospital, and I said, my wife's contractions are uh, this long, and they're this far apart. And um, by the way, that's the average over the last half hour. I can also give you the average over the... Oh, you want me to come in? Okay. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> So we went into the hospital, and uh, amazing, uh, uh, Lewisham Hospital Birthing Center, uh, midwife-led, amazing midwives there. And, and uh, so we went into our room. Uh, it's NHS, uh, you know, and there's this uh, pool there, because we were going to have a water birth. Uh, but the pool hadn't been filled with water yet, because it wasn't time yet. Um, and as the day progressed, the contractions got longer, and they got closer together. This is why the midwives want to know this information, because it's an indicator of how close you are to giving birth. Your contractions get longer, and they get closer together. And... Um, it got to the point where uh, we were monitoring this stuff, and Leanne felt that it was time to get in the pool. Um, but when we spoke to the midwives, they disagreed, because there is a third uh, bit of data that they're interested in, which is how regular are your contractions. And they felt that my wife's contractions weren't regular enough. So it was my job then to persuade the midwives that Leanne was right. Sorry, that we were right. Uh, and um, and um, so fortunately, the app that I downloaded uh, for monitoring contractions had a feature where you could export 
the data and load it onto your computer. And fortunately, I brought my laptop with me. <laughs> so uh, I was able to knock something up quickly uh, in Excel um, to <laughs> show the midwives. And um, I didn't have time to do a PowerPoint presentation, which is a shame, because it, uh, it would have been more impactful. But I have managed to uh, do that for you. So um, let me just show you. So this is. Uh, <laughs> So along the bottom is the time of day, and then uh, up the top there is the length of contractions uh, in minutes and seconds. And uh, there's the data. So uh, you can see it's very, oh, that point there is, uh, that's when I went to move the car. But, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's an outlier. Uh, and, uh, but uh, yes, I did leave my wife doing a contraction to move the car, but Lewisham Hospital has very strict parking regulations. <laughs> Um, and you can see the issue with the data, the, 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 the spread is too great. The, the deviation, the standard deviation in uh, my wife's contractions was too broad, and that's uh, what the midwives were picking up on. Uh, she's not ready. But uh, you can see that actually, as time progresses, they are becoming more regular. The length of the contractions are becoming more regular. And there's a wonderful thing you can do in Excel, uh, which is where you track the standard deviation and how it changes over time. Um, and so I was able to, I mean, I, I took some mathematical liberties <laughs> to prove the point, but I was able to kind of uh, create a sort of envelope uh, of possible contraction lengths and project that into the future uh, like that. Um, and you can see there's a point in time when my wife's contractions were going to become perfectly regular, uh, and that is at 2055. And it was my hypothesis that that is the moment that my daughter will be born. And um, the midwives uh, still weren't convinced. <laughs> so I said, look, I'll show you my working out. <laughs> um, and at that point, they started to fill the pool. So uh, that was great. And uh, soon afterwards, Leanne got in the pool. You can see I stopped pressing the button at that point. <laughs> um, and Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that my daughter was born at 2054. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, so uh, here she is. She's, uh, she's called Lyra. She's named after the, the constellation Lyra. Um, and uh, now I'm, a, uh, I'm a, a science presenter. That's my job. And... So I'm quite a, I like to think that I'm a rational person, a rational thinker, uh, a scientific thinker. So Lyra presents a problem for me, um, which is that yeah, I like to think that I have a good grasp of probability. Um, but at the same time, I also know that my wife, Leanne, has given birth to the best baby ever. <laughs> and that seems astronomically unlikely. <laughs> and yet, it's demonstrably true. Um, <laughs> so what, you know, what can I do about, about this? Um, and so I did the only thing that a rational thinker could do in this situation, which was to start to search for coincidences surrounding the birth of my daughter that would perhaps point to her being cosmically important <laughs> in some way. Because that's the rational thing to do, right? So I thought about her name. Um, we actually named her after a, a character from Philip Pullman's uh, novels, his Dark Materials. Um, uh, but she happens to be the, the name of a constellation as well. And that made me think, maybe I should look at where the constellation Lyra was in the sky at the moment my daughter was born. And you can do this, you can do the maths. So you find out the ascension and declination of the celestial point that you're interested in. So I looked at the very center of the constellation Lyra. And then you can uh, relate that to the time of day and the date and where you are on the Earth. Uh, or you can just plug it all into a website. Um, so I plugged in all that information. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that at the very moment that my daughter Lyra was born, the dead center of the constellation Lyra was in the very center of the sky. 
if we were in a boat <laughs> off the west coast of Portugal at the time. Um, <laughs> and here's the amazing coincidence. My wife speaks Portuguese. <laughs> and if that isn't evidence enough that my daughter is the best daughter ever, I don't know what is. Thank you very much. <laughs>